chest. Good. So good morning. Thanks for being prompt today, and uh, it's good to see you. I, uh, I, I know, as we all do, that sort of when you've been out of school for a while, it's always a little difficult to restart things, but uh, it's really nice to see my advisory group this morning and, and to know there's some routine back. Uh, and, and I also had some other uh, moments to reflect on being back this morning, for example, Mr. Simpson, who, uh, Mr. Frank Simpson, who uh, had quadruple bypass surgery before the holidays, uh, came by to visit. And this is sort of his first day back, uh, or his first day out, really. Uh, and he can only be out half days because of recovery. Uh, but, you know, talking with him kind of cements that, you know, when you can do things and you can be back, it's it's a good feeling, frankly. And and uh, and also talking with uh, the maintenance department about uh, Cashew. I'm not sure how many of you know Cashew, but he uh, he's a terrific person. He went back to Ethiopia over the holiday because his mother's been sick. And I think a number of you know that Ethiopia has been sort of torn by civil war and a lot of strife, and he had a meter in the south of Ethiopia, uh, but got back on Saturday safely, and, uh, you know, talking with people like him about being glad to be safe, and, and it's easy to take for granted what we have. Uh, so uh, this morning, I remind all of us not to take for granted and have a really good new beginning. I... Uh, shared kind of a motivational quotation with my advisory group this morning I'd gotten uh, about, you know, we're the person that makes a difference in terms of our life, not the outside world. So I hope you will make a difference and, and have a great start to the new semester, which incidentally I hope is the best semester that I've seen at MBA in 29 years and, and sort of counting on you to help me make it so. Some of you remember Mark Clyburn, class of 2021. Uh, sadly, he lost his dad this past week, and uh, the funeral, I believe, is next Tuesday or Wednesday. I think there may be a visitation next Tuesday and funeral Wednesday. Uh, but it was a tough uh, story beyond the obvious loss in that Mark found his father uh, and, uh, not alive, and you know, just the optics of that are hard, uh, but keep him and his family in your thoughts. And behind me, Mr. Cheevers uh, had a kind of challenging uh, holiday in that he lost his younger brother, who is, I believe, 42. And uh, it, he uh, talked to him on New Year's Eve, I think he told me, and uh, just not long after that, uh, uh, he found out about it. And I just saw Miss McMahon out of the side of my eye, and she lost her dad over the holiday. So those things are, are hard, obviously, and, and we need each other to help us move forward. Uh, we, uh, I'm trying to look this up, we had a soup kitchen this past Saturday, and uh, I appreciate those of you who were there. I don't know if we have the, I just got it, so I don't know that we have the pictures to go up. But in any case, this past Saturday, 10 students, along with Mr. Bromfield, Mr. Moxley, and Mr. Thompson, served a New Year's meal of baked ham, black-eyed peas, collard greens, and cornbread to over 100 people at the Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen. Now, it's great to see so many of you invest your time in service. Uh, that will be the heart of the MLK induction next Tuesday uh, to talk about that topic. So I hope you'll, you'll be thinking about how you invest your time uh, in, in, in many ways, because it, it's a commodity, commodity that uh, you don't get back, and you want to make the most use of it. Uh, all of you should have received an email over the holiday about Mr. Mark Tips, who stepped down as our athletic director. Uh, I got to know uh, Mr. Tips pretty well in the late 90s and then uh, 
afterwards we were in a leadership Nashville class in 2000, and I talked to him over the years about uh, his interest in being at a school after uh, his law career. Uh, he did a lot of great things. He helped students think about athletics and college admission by leveraging their choices and options through athletics. He obviously managed a robust and competitive athletic program. Uh, he was involved in the building of the Burke Holder Center. And so uh, we appreciate him and we'll miss him. And I think you may have gotten an email too that uh, Mr. Mike Anderson is now our interim director of athletics and I'm pleased about that. He'll do a great job and has already been very busy uh, planning for this new year. And he'll be up actually in a few minutes to make an announcement. The uh, squash courts have uh, had kind of a, a funny journey since we built this building, as most of you know, because of some flooding issues we had to deal with and then some insurance issues. So it took a long time to get those courts back up and running. And uh, fortunately, uh, they're in great shape and a lot of you are using those courts. There are about 10 to 15 friends of the school who are very interested in squash and have been meeting to talk about how we can build a program. And uh, one of them, a guy named Jonathan Dyke, uh, has arranged for two world-class, and I, I don't say that lightly because they're, they're ranked in the top five squash players in, in the world. Uh, they're both from England. Uh, to be here this Saturday, they will be uh, at the courts in the morning for uh, clinics, uh, so if you're interested in learning more about squash and learning how to play, uh, that would be a great time to be here Saturday morning. And then they're going to sort of have a play around with various people. And then they're going to do an exhibition uh, Saturday afternoon. So we'll put all those details in the announcements uh, so you can have that information. Uh, in addition to uh, the Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen, we had uh, the 41st Southern Bell Forum this weekend uh, with 48 teams from 14 different states around the country. Peninsula High School from California is the champion of the uh, tournament and they defeated a school incidentally named after the great football player Walter Payton in Illinois in the final round. Uh, we did well, NBA did well, uh, having uh, a number of speakers who were recognized, uh, including Chandon, who was the third top overall speaker, Cy Turner the fifth, Jack Young the sixth, and Raleigh Maxwell the 15th. Uh, and, and we also had a group of students competing in, a, in another tournament remotely, and they, they did well uh, also this weekend. So it was great to see another Southern Bell and see it back live after the uh, pandemic and I appreciate all of the, the all of you who are involved and obviously all four of our debate coaches uh, that put that on. There's some information now that we're going to put on the screens about backpacks. Uh, so the backpacks are now here. It was easy to distribute them right before the holidays to the junior school which we did and we're going to dis distribute now the backpacks to the high school. So the seniors, if you can read that, uh, will, uh, and, and the backpacks will all be in the yoga room upstairs there, uh, and the seniors can pick them up today, E or F blocks. Juniors can pick up their backpacks at break on Tuesday. Sophomores uh, on also on Tuesday, E and F blocks. Freshmen on Wednesday at break. If you have questions about the backpacks, just see someone in Mr. Sawyer's office and I'm sure they can help you. Uh, we have a, a guest here today and Mr. Cheevers is going to introduce him. Good morning guys. Uh, we're hosting a blood drive here at MBA on January 24th and I would like to welcome Mr. Greg Salkind from the American Red Cross to tell us a little bit more about this event. Thanks.
morning. Uh, as Mr. Cheever says, my name is Greg Salkine. I'm an account manager with the Red Cross. MBA is going to be sponsoring a blood drive on Tuesday, January 24th from 8.30 in the morning to 12.30 in the afternoon in the auxiliary gym. The importance of blood donation, and I know uh, Headmaster Joya was talking about somebody who had a triple bypass surgery. That's somebody that would definitely be receiving blood products during the course of that surgery because of the amount of blood that's lost while the surgery is taking place. And every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. Blood cannot be manufactured. It has no substitute. The blood that we supply goes to no local Nashville area patients. It can only come from generosity of donors like you. Um, this is the first blood drive we've had at MBA since 2020, uh, at the onset of the pandemic. And why it's so important for you all to donate is because the last four consecutive years, we've had 80,000 fewer first-time donors meaning that today we have 320,000 less people that are first-time donors than we did four years ago. The concern is that the majority of our donor base is made up of the baby boomers, and they're getting to a point where they're aging out from donating because of various medical issues that arise and other factors. So it's up to the younger generation like you all to replace those donors and hopefully become lifelong donors. Blood is like medicine. Um, it's used in so many different ways. Uh, you know, we, Vanderbilt University Medical Center is here locally. They're the only level one trauma hospital in the area, and they do all kinds of things relating to the need for blood. Um, you know, they deal with horrific accidents and people that are life flighted there. So people that, you know, are in surgery or gunshot wounds, any kind of trauma, they're going to receive red blood cells. Um, if you're a cancer patient, you're going to receive plasma, or excuse me, platelets. And if you're a burn victim, you're going to receive plasma. Again, these things are not, there's no other way to get them except from donors. So it, it's a pretty amazing thing because it takes an hour of your time and you can save up to three people's lives. I don't think there's a lot of things you can do where you can have that kind of an impact in such a short span of time. Um, if you're 16 years old, you can donate. You will need a parental consent. Um, I'll be bringing those by tomorrow. So you can see Mr. Cheevers or your fellow student, Harrison Zoller. Um, they'll both have those forms. If you're 17 and older, you can donate without a parental consent. Um, so I hope that you all will consider signing up to donate. Hopefully we'll see you next, or two weeks from tomorrow, the 24th. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Greg and, and Mr. Cheevers, for uh, having this uh, opportunity to hear about donations, uh, blood donations. I, know, I personally know about this because uh, most of you know I've been through a fair amount of cancer treatment and uh, I had to have a lot of platelets. So I know how important it is and, and hope a number of you will think about doing so. We have two uh, particular announcements right now. Dr. Creamer, if you'd come up and then KJ afterwards. Good morning. This summer, high school students have the opportunity to take part in two research experiences, one at Belmont University and one at Vanderbilt. At Belmont University, up to four students will be able to take part in a data research internship, while at Vanderbilt University, we have a professor who specializes in lung development who is opening up an internship in their lab. If you're interested, there will be a meeting tomorrow in I-31 during break. If you are interested but you cannot attend the meeting, please just email me. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is KJ Jones. I'm the president of the African American Studies Club. And uh, next Monday, the uh, African American Studies Club will be uh, participating in the MLK March, January 16th, MLK Day. Uh, we will listen to the keynote speaker, uh, which will be Michael Eric Dyson. And we will provide transportation to the march, and we will provide tra transportation from the march. Uh, you will need transportation to MBA that day, and we will be meeting around 8.15 to 8.45. 
and we'll be sending out a Google form for anyone that wants to sign up. Uh, feel free uh, to ask questions. If you do, email either me or Mr. Cooper. Uh, love to see everyone there. Thank you. Thanks, KJ. Uh, Mr. Cooper came by to see me and then wrote me this weekend about KJ speaking about that event next Monday. Uh, we've been sort of out of that routine because of the pandemic, so this is the first time in a few years we've actually reignited uh, doing that uh, visit to the march on uh, MLK Day. So I hope a number of you will sign up through the Google form. I know they'll put some more information out uh, for you. Uh, Dr. Boyd and I talked about two announcements. Uh, one is that uh, you all should have received uh, course registration in the high school underclassmen this morning, uh, all t rising 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And uh, there's a set schedule, uh, I believe in about two weeks time from today, uh, you need to have that information completed. And then following that, uh, Advisors will electronically send that course uh, planning uh, to Dr. Boyd's office and Ms. McCamus, and then we'll get a confirmation back, which we'll give to you, and ask your family to sign off on it so that we know that everybody's communicated. So that, that's an important step in uh, working on the plans for next year. Also, uh, today is the deadline for Wilson grants. Uh, this afternoon, I guess, or this evening. So please make sure that uh, you've completed what you need to finish or just talk to uh, either some, uh, one of your teachers if it's a particular discipline or certainly you can see Dr. Boyd and he could tell you more about that. So please note that. We, we had a number of athletic events over the holiday, particularly wrestling, basketball, and hockey. There was a very large tournament this weekend at Father Ryan High School, 54 teams. We placed sixth uh, and did, uh, did very well. Uh, Hudson Frazier finished in sixth place, Mac Russ fourth, uh, Ethan Clint eighth, Connor Corby eighth, Browning Trainer fourth, Gabe Fisher was a champion and voted the most outstanding wrestler of the tournament, Max Fisher in third place. Uh, we also had some other tournaments over the holiday, and they did, the team did really well. Our varsity basketball team has played a number of times during the holidays, uh, and the most recent game was against FRA last week, which they won. Uh, and uh, our younger teams, our micro teams, uh, one of them defeated FRA. The uh, other two teams lost last week. Our varsity hockey team played Ryan. Well, I'm very pleased now to ask uh, uh, Mr. Anderson to come up. He's going to recognize a few students that got uh, public recognition over the holiday. Good morning and welcome back. Uh, I know football season has been over with for more than a month, um, but I do want to recognize some individual awards that have come out since then. Um, please stand when I, uh, when I call your name. So the 2022 Division II AAA All-Region Team, Jonathan Moore, Claiborne Richards, and Stay Standing, Blake Ragsdale, Grayson Soper, Browning Trainer, Payne Daniel, Eric George, Ty Bird. Honorable mention, Hunter Johnson, Max Fisher, Jake Moore, Hutton Durrett. And the player of the year, Marcel Reed. And then the co-defensive player of the year, Gabe Fisher. Congratulations to those guys right there. Congratulations. Take a seat, guys. Then recently, we've also had the Tennessee Sports Writers Association Division II AAA All-State Team. Um, Marcel Reed, stand up. Jonathan Moore, Claiborne Richards, Gabe Fisher, and Eric George. Those are great right there. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. 
And, and then a few more awards for Marcel, the 2022 Division II AAA Mr. Football to start. Stand up, Marcel. 2022 Main Street, Main Street Preps All-State Player of the Year and the Division II AAA East Region Player of the Year. Congratulations, Marcel. You know, these are, these are great accolades for these young men, but the one that's most important to me is these are all outstanding young men and the men that they've grown into, and I'm really, really pleased with what they've become um, since watching them from seventh grade or ninth grade. Uh, and finally, I do want to plug tonight is Hockey Senior Night at Centennial at 740. And then we also, tomorrow night, we have a senior night for wrestling uh, at 6 p.m. in the uh, wrestling room. Uh, if you haven't come and watched either one of those, you need to. Uh, wrestling is, uh, wrestling's team is amazing, and, and you need to come out and watch them. They're great. Thank you, guys. Mr. Anderson and uh, Mr. Chauvin uh, also helped organize a signing we did for Marcel uh, right at the beginning of the holidays for Texas A&M. And it was nice to, to be there with your family and a number of your friends and supporters. Uh, what was particularly meaningful to me, Marcel, is that your dad talked uh, in such a meaningful way about your, your family and kind of your family's character and commitments to the church. And he said, as you re will recall, he said, you know, so long, Marcel, so long as you take care of who you are and keep your, uh, your head on and, and your focus in your life, football will be great. And I thought that was a, a really nice way for your dad to support you and kind of keep things uh, in focus with the right priorities. I, I, I knew we'd have a shorter assembly today and I thought that was a good thing after coming back from the holidays. I'm sure a number of you like me have been asked why NBA has such a long holiday and I've just learned that if I can squeeze out a few more days and take advantage of that last weekend, why not do it? And so that's what I've been doing the last couple of years. Uh, Cheap way to get applause, but uh, I enjoy it too. Uh, have a great week. Thanks for being back.